Shalom Israel, it's your brother J.D. Nijah coming to you with another message of edification and exhortation. Before I get started, all honor, praises, and glory to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakakadash, Yahweh, our Heavenly Father. Bahashem comes in the name of Yahweh Shai, our Savior, and whose name means deliverer, who people ignorantly call Jesus Christ. And the Rakakwadash is the Holy Spirit that gives us this power, wisdom, and knowledge to press out these or push out these truths and these perilous, dangerous times that we live in. Okay, so after all the sh uh, <laughs> after all the crap I went through with uh, our wonderful justice system and uh, I lost, I took a big fat L to stand up for myself. I could have went through the whole rigmarole of doing what they told me again and agreeing that I'm guilty for something I didn't do and all that, but I'm at that age now and the Lord told me to fight. So I fought and I won, but in the process of winning my court case, I lost my apartment at the beach with my daughter. I lost most of my business through um, emotional and um, just trauma, you know, trauma. It was, uh, it was overwhelming to, uh, to get treated. <laughs> I mean, our people are ruined because of the way we've been treated. And, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm changed. Definitely. I might probably might not be doing these messages. So the Lord has his ways of, uh, making things happen the way he wants. So I obviously wasn't doing exactly what he was wanting me to do, but now here I am. I'm doing everything he wants me to do as best I can because I'm not, I don't want to go through that again. I don't want to be hurt. I don't want any of that. I'm a nervous wreck. And uh, anyway, enough about me, but the point I'm trying to make here is uh, thieves. Thieves, man. The world is full of thieves. No one, no one wants to be honest. No one wants to do a hard day's work that um, that is honest. No one wants to even tell the truth about the smallest things. This place is full of lies and full of thieves. It's that's what makes it so despicable. That's what makes it so vile. And um, so, what I did. That, this is one of those days where I actually. Um, looked into some scriptures to talk about what it is about thieves that the Lord hates. So anyway, I got Exodus 22, um, verse, verses 8 and 9. It's kind of goes on the same, goes along with the same story. So uh, Exodus 22 verse 8 and it reads if the thief be not found then the master of the house shall be brought unto the judges to see whether he have put his hand onto his neighbor's goods verse 9 it reads for all manner of trespass whether it be for ox for ass for sheep for raiment or for any manner of lost thing which another challengeth to be his the cause of both parties shall come before the judge, and whom the judge shall condemn. He shall pay double unto his neighbor. Okay, so what happened to me is um, the judge didn't rule rightly, and I I didn't get re, re I didn't get recompensated for any of it. So in Exodus it says, if someone trespasses and, and comes against you, and and for any reason 
if they can't prove that they were there for a, um, a legitimate reason to get back something that was theirs or whatever, if they're coming in to get something that's not theirs or they're claiming something that's not theirs, how can you, how can a person claim that you you as a person are theirs? And that's what happened to me. The person claimed that they be, I belong to them. I don't belong to anybody. I'm my own man in my own house. I can do whatever I want. How can someone else come in, break in, and claim that I'm theirs? And then um, and not be punished for coming in and, and, and causing uh, uh, falsehood. So that's the first one. Lot the thief is a is a the thief is a ruthless person that um, has no scruples. They have no standards. They have no consideration of um, Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai coming down on their head and squashing them into a um, flattened cookie. And some of these folks are gonna. <laughs> well, a lot of them. We got the two thirds for sure. These these ninjas are out of control, like you wouldn't believe. So, um, you know, what brought this on was, um, I'm still, I'm still actually trying to get my life back together from, from that whole two, over two years of fighting these f wicked sons of Guglamesh, these prick bass backwards dudes, you know? this wicked place. I mean, they came against me hard, like, uh, they, these girls just got shit on. They were looking at the bird, fucking stupid asses. I hate to, I hate to say it, but people are just stupid. They're looking up at the bird, look at the bird, and then the bird shit right on them. Look at them. Look at them. I'm not, I don't feel sorry for you. Look at her. Pretty funny shit right up. Shit right on those Edomites. Excuse me. Salaki so brothers, damn man. It's just, mm. okay. I'm not, I'm not in a very good mood. I spent, what the point I was trying to get to is I spent the morning um, trying to get back into my uh, Bank America account because I kind of um, didn't care and I was just going on the money I had, but I figured I better start paying attention now. Maybe I can get a resemblance of my life back. So the, the point I'm trying to make is that, um, you know, you go into these apps and your money's in the bank and blah, 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 and, and you have to put all these passcodes and and online ID, and you got to prove that you're this person, and blah, blah, blah. That, the reason we do that, everyone thinks it's all fun and games now because we're so used to, um, to hiding everything because there's thieves everywhere. This fucker's going to walk right up on me. Sweatsuit, really, dude? Cool. I, I'm sorry, Salaki brothers, I'm just in a f raunchy mood because of thieves. There there shouldn't be all kinds of passcodes. Now this asshole's looking in the tree to get shit on. Whatever. I'm <laughs> this world is just baffling. So here's another scripture on, uh, on thieves. Um, it's verse 10. This is in red letter. This is... Uh, this is John 10.10. 10. The thief cometh but not to steal and to kill and to destroy and come that they might have life. What is it? Oh, I, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. <laughs> uh, verse 11 it reads, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. So, <laughs> he he's saying instead of taking he's giving if there was if people weren't all about taking things that weren't theirs and claiming things that aren't theirs we would have a righteous society because we would be giving instead of taking so um, some things vex 
different men of the Lord differently. This one really vexes me because I've been, I've taken a lot of L's as far as this wicked society um, um, setting up their dracon draconian laws that um, pretty much ruin you by claiming things that aren't true and false witnessing against you. But anyway, verse 12, but he that is a hireling and not the shepherd whose own the sheep are not, he doesn't own the sheep. He doesn't, he doesn't own them, but he, but he's, he's a hireling watching after him, right? Hireling. That's what a hireling is. Um, seeth the wolf coming and leaveth the sheep and flee and the wolf catches them and scatters the sheep. The hireling fleeth because he is a hireling and careth not for the sheep. So these, these thieves, these, these want to be somebody's, if you, if you're just hiring someone to do something that's important and you're relying on someone to help you do something that's not, um, about them, if it's not about them, they're going to take off. They, he, these hirelings, they see the wolf, they run and they throw you under the bus, man. They, they sell you out in a second and, um, they'll tell you whatever they want to, to your face but behind your back, they're they're talking a whole nother story. So that when everything, um, when there's a question, the the narrative has been, you're the bad guy, they're the good guy. So they they lie, they cheat, they steal, and they destroy everything because they're um, they're doing false witness. They're creating false witnessing against people. They're they're bringing other people into false witness. So they're actually destroying other people that. If they had the truth, they wouldn't have spoken the way they did because the hireling has has um, convinced everyone that um, that the good person is the bad person. That's why the Bible says in the last days uh, we will have good for evil. They'll switch good for evil and evil for good. That's why everything we see they won't let you uh, they won't let you say anything righteous. He's cute. They won't let you. Very cute. Eat a bite. <laughs> they won't let you. Uh, I lost my concentration on that one. I need to find a different place to uh, do this now that summer's coming. I get distracted very easily. Anyhow, that's that's the second one. They, they only come to steal and destroy. That's what they're all about. And, and that's what that's what lying and, and stealing does. It um. It destroys everything. It's a, um, it's a destructive. That's why Yahushai talks about it so much throughout the Bible. I could, I could read scriptures all day long. On uh, where's Obadiah? Darn it! I could read scriptures all day long on on the the danger of the thief and the liar. It's it's. That's one thing Esau Edom's been really good at is pushing lies and letting everyone else push lies too. Yeah, we went to the moon. Right. Right. The earth is a round spinning wet ball rocket flying through space at 1,000 miles an hour or 10,000 million miles an hour or whatever they BS they say. Right. Um, <laughs> which other one? We came from, we came from monkeys. Right. <laughs> that's a that's a direct blasphemous claim right there. We came from monkeys. Well, evolution. Yeah. Spell it a little di different and it goes from evolution to evolution. Evolution. We came from monkeys. Yeah, evolution. Got it? Uh, Obadiah, what do we got? One and five. If thieves, it reads, Obadiah... Uh, chapter 1 verse 5 if thieves come to thee if robbers by night how art thou cut off would they not have stolen till they had enough if the grape gatherers came to thee would they not leave some grapes um, how are the things of Esau searched out how are his hidden things sought up so right there they're saying who's the who's the thief that will not he won't even leave enough on the ground for the, um, oh, what do they call them? 
Uh, the ones that cut, there was a, there's a name for it. I can't remember. Gleaners. The gleaners are the ones that come behind. They're the poor people that come behind the, the gatherers and pick up the grapes that fell off the, um, the vine. So what does Esau do? He doesn't even leave enough for the gleaners to feed themselves and their family. They're poor. They don't have any means. They go in behind the um, gatherers and they, they glean the grapes. And um, Esau's wicked, man. How are the things, verse 6, it reads, How are the things of Esau searched out? Let's see what it says there. Esau. <laughs> Esau is. The things of Esau are that. Um, what else does it say? Two. And how are his hidden things sought up? Treasure sought out. He's he's always seeking some kind of treasure on earth because he's so earthly. He's so he's so despicably um, carnal. You know. Not only does does he want to have a wife, he wants to have a mistress, and some of these wicked bastards they want to actually go to places where they can um, have underage situations also so I don't know if, it, if this place doesn't make you sick to your stomach I I don't know what would if you're just turning your head and going I don't see it I don't see it I don't hear it I don't hear it you're a deaf, dumb, and blind kid, and when you cry out to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, at the end, Yahweh, Jesus, or whatever you people are going to call him, a lot of you people are going to call the wrong name to begin with. He's not even going to hear you. But um, even you one-third and two-thirds Israelites that are not doing the right thing and aren't hearkening to the words of the prophets... The words of the prophets are the words of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. You got to realize that. <laughs> All five of you. <laughs> All five of you. So I'm, I didn't want to make this go on and on and on, but what the point I'm trying to make is um, this wicked shit has to end. And you know, every time I go to put passwords in for stuff like that, and it's always vexed me, but at this point, I, I worked on it yesterday and it's never easy because they want it to be, they want it to be hard so thieves can't break in right because they're coming to steal kill and destroy so it took me a little while to do it because I get so vexed and nervous and, and shaky and that it um, I'm sure some of you people have the same issue with that type of crap if you don't if it's all if switching passwords and all that is part of your game, you're just admitting that you understand the ways of the theme and you're just, you're, you're um, dealing with it. I could pull up scriptures that talk about um, thieves being put to death because in the kingdom, there's not going to be any of that crap going on. You aren't going to be able to lie. You aren't going to be able to cheat. You aren't going to be able to steal. You aren't going to be able to false witness. You aren't going to... None of that. That's what makes it so glorious. Glorious. The light will shine bright and the darkness will be put out. So that's all I got to say. That's your, it's your brother, J.D. Niger. Man, these liars and these thieves... They create so much chaos in Babylon the Great. This place is nothing but confusion and intrusion and perversion and inversion. Everything's upside down, inside out. It's... Uh... One more thing. The Bible said, told, I think he told... Uh, who do you tell to eat the roll? 
Ezekiel maybe? Eat the whole roll and it'll be in your stomach at first it'll be it'll be sweet as honey. But then it's gonna turn bitter. So some of us men have been eating the roll for so long. And um, a lot of times it tastes sweet as it's going down. But then when it hits your stomach, it turns bitter. It makes you sick. And uh, it, I'm just following along behind. Like I said, my messages always follow. Um, you need a physician, Israel. You're sick. You're either sick because you don't know how sick you are or you're, you know how sick you are and it's making you even sicker knowing that you're sick. So, all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, the 144,000 elect of the house of David that's going to uh, rise. Remember, Babylon is falling, falling is Babylon. Rising is Zion. Zion is rising. Thank Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. Hassad to the one third, they're going to make it up out of here. This is your brother, J.D. Nijah. Love you, Israel. I'm out.